welcome to Book Talk. Today, I thought I would tell you the story behind the writing of my novella in Across the Shores. Now, at the end of the last season, I had my co-authors on, um, and we did a, a fun episode where we all talked in general about our novellas in the collection and how we kind of came together, which was so much fun because one of my co-authors, Carolyn Miller, is from Australia. And then... Um, Angela Couch is from Canada and Kelly Goshern is from Virginia. And this is a collection that spans the continents and uh, time. And it was just so much fun. But what collects, connects them all is a cross, a, a cross necklace. And I loved it. And I always have to check because it's across the shores. And then my novella is called Love Along the Shores. I made the title way too close to the title for the collection. Um, but... Mine is the last one in this collection. Um, and they asked me to write that one because it's set during World War II. And so all of these have the idea of there's a different time. They're connected kind of by family, but really by this necklace that is sent to different women. And the idea with mine was when they asked me if I would do something along World War II, Number one, I was honored to be asked to be part of the collection. But number two, it was really fun uh, because it had been a while since I had written World War II. So I was excited to get to go back to that time period because it's one that's near and dear to my heart. I love finding and um, highlighting those stories that are set during um, that pivotal time. And I know there are many, many, and it, World War II may not be yours, but for me, that's always been one that I just really love and appreciate, um, probably because my grandparents were young adults during that time. So one of my grandpas actually served at the Pentagon during World War II. He was married and had a son, uh, and he was separated from his wife and son while he was at the Pentagon. And then my other grandpa was drafted four times and each time he was sent home because he was the only son of a farmer and so he was sent home and he, that actually became part of the foundation for my first novel canteen dreams and the hero's journey you know what would it be like to want to serve and be prohibited from serving um, when you're surrounded by men who are being drafted and being sent and so that kind of became like this whole question of, you know, how would you handle that? And what would that do to you um, if you were in that kind of situation? So I think that's part of the reason why I'm drawn to that, because it, it is kind of it's near history, but it's still it's historical, um, especially now that we're, gosh, 80 years from those events. And I think it's so important to capture them. So. Um, when I was asked to be part of it, because I was writing four books last year, I knew it had to be something that um, I was like, I'd love to do it as long as I can pull out this idea I've had, um, but I had never been able to sell it to a, a publisher. We'd sent it, I'd actually submitted it in a collection to Barbara before, and it just said, for whatever reason, just kind of sat there uh, and had never heard anything one way or the other. So I was like, that's fine. Um, the timing was just right now. And so it's the love along the shores is actually set on the Outer Banks of North Carolina um, in 1942. So at the height of the Battle of the Atlantic. And what I had discovered back in 2011, maybe 2012, but sometime right around there, I had learned that there were U-boat attacks right off the shores of North Carolina. And there were a few, you know, South and a few North, but North Carolina, that, that strip right around along North Carolina was really where there were lots of um, attacks. And I hadn't been aware of that. So I figured other people weren't aware of that. And I thought that would just be really interesting to dig into. And so because of that, I knew the hero was going to be in the Coast Guard. The heroine was a little fuzzier to me, um, just because at it, at that time in the war, there weren't all the auxiliary women's services that would 
kind of appear in 43 and 44 and definitely be in place by 45. It was just too early in the war for a lot of that to have um, been formed. And so, I mean, they were just kind of starting. Um, and so I was like, and this had to be because of when the attacks were happening, when the sinkings were happening, there was a very tight time frame. So I was really restricted. Um, in fact, there's one deviation I made and I had one of the editors go, why did you change? And it was like, I just needed to make this one historical change. Um, and I had this book, U-Boats Off the Outer Banks, was really, really helpful for me. And you can see I made all kinds of dog-eared pages and was highlighting and underlining things because this was just fantastic. Like, there's a photo of an Enigma a machine that was discovered on the floor of, you know, that was recovered from a, one of the U-boats um, that was attacked and stuff. And so it was a really fantastic, but we know when different boats were torpedoed. So we, there's an exact date and we know which boat went down and where it went down and where any people who were recovered from it, wh which port they were taken to. Um, and so there's one that I had it go to a different port because I just needed it to, to for the purpose of the story. But I, I put it in the author note and I explained why I changed it. The editor, one of the line editors was like, I just don't know why you're doing this. I was like, it's fine. It's fine. I'll tell the readers why. Uh, but because I I knew it was not going to be on the on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, one of the really interesting things for me as I was writing a lot of love along the shores was I kept moving which of the Outer Banks Islands the story was going to happen on because I'd start re I kept researching I did so much research and I would be like okay so I think it's going to be on this island and I'd start writing like it was going to be on that island and I get into it a little bit and be like no no that's still not quite the right island and so then I do a little more research and then I'd move it south and so then I have to go in and I'd have to change things because the island was set up differently and there were different things on that island and there were different, you know, torpedo boats around that island. And so everything would have to shift. And so what took the longest when writing this book was getting the right island. And it was so funny to me how I'm like, good grief, I just had to change the island again. And I think I had to change it like three or four times. So it was just crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, but it just made me laugh because I've I've never really had that happen before. Every other time it's been like, okay, this is where the book's set. Either I've a couple of times I've created a town, or other times it's been like it's in Lincoln, Nebraska, or it's in Old Town Alexandria in Virginia, or you know, it's in a very defined place. And so this time it was just that I had to keep shifting it so that I could get it close enough to where the action in a sense was happening so that people could have seen the explosions, that the oil from the torpedoed boats would have washed up on the shores um, because that was happening in specific places. And the more research I did, the more I'd be like, yep, that, was, that wouldn't have been happening on that island at the time I needed it to. It would have been happening there at a different point in time. And so I'm like, that doesn't work. And so I'd have to shift. And so then that changes key points in the story because then everything else shifts as well. And so it was just really kind of funny and different. The other thing that was fascinating is um, I ended up, now I'm going to have to think which island I actually ended up putting it on because I wrote this a while ago. Um, it's so funny how I've written two books since I did this one. Ta -da -da. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, I don't even remember. It's on an island that I want to go to. But anyway, Okacroak. I knew if I thought about it long enough, it would come back to me. So one of the things that's interesting about Okacroak, and it may happen on some of the other Outer Banks islands as well, but they actually still speak a kind of Scottish brogue. So I found this through, there are like YouTube videos of news stories of people capturing um, the 
the resident still speaking it. And it's fascinating. But one of the books I got is this children's book that won an award in 1957. So it's Taffy of Torpedo Junction. Um, and it's from, it's set you know, like during World War II. But one of the fun things about it is the characters actually talk in that brogue. And so I could pull out some of, okay, what would that have been like um, at the time, as well as then listening to the documentaries from, to, you know, from 10, 15 years ago and trying to capture, okay, so what might that sound like? And trying to kind of find that middle ground between the two, <laughs> excuse me. And so that's where the research becomes really, really important. And so books like this, the U-boats off, yeah, off the Outer Banks, and just the amount of copious research that the author Jim Bunch had done was so, so helpful. Um, and I just love looking at like the bibliography and seeing all of the resources that he relied on. And then something like a children's novel that's more historic because it was written in 1956 and then won a North Carolina award in 1957. Um, so, you know, just kind of historic, but gives you that flavor and that flavor of what it would have been like living on the islands then. But then so much research in for this particular one was from historic websites um, for the Outer Banks in North Carolina. And then looking at the Coast Guard websites um, and the kind of ancillary auxiliary websites related to the different branches and services because the Navy was there on Okacroke, the Coast Guard was there, the Army was actually there uh, for some of the watch services. And so looking at a lot of theirs, um, finding um, pictures related to what they were doing at the time. I mean, even things like figuring out whether or not there was electricity on the island and it was a generator, they had a massive generator. And so putting my heroine's house at a place where they were like the last house on the island that had electricity, but it was generator provided. It wasn't like there were electrical power lines, there was generator provided. And so even finding that kind of information out, it's amazing the kinds of things you have to look into. So I hope you found it interesting to learn a little bit more about the story and the why behind Love Along the Shores, which is my novella in the Across the Shores collection. It was so much fun to write and just to, to write with these other women, but really to bring the story of some of what happened on the Outer Banks of North Carolina during the war to life. And I hope you enjoy reading it as much as I enjoyed researching and writing it.